Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scotty G, back at it again. Had a great question in our private Facebook group. It's called Marriage Isn't Dead, if you want to take a look at it. So let me just read it to you real quick. What's a good way to respond to your wife when she complains about doing daily chores like laundry or grocery shopping while you got up two hours before anyone else and did a 10 plus hour work day at work? This is such a good question. And a very, very common thing that I see in discussion groups and in literature and in, in coaching calls. This is about keeping score in a relationship, marriage, long term, short term. It's all the same thing. So the first thing I want to illustrate is don't get angry or hurt. You are in control of your emotions. A situation like this is totally understandable if you want to get upset because you're looking at what you've gone through and you don't really understand truly what your other person's going through. You've got to stop and put yourself in their shoes in the moment. My analogy that I use quite often when it comes to controlling your emotions and controlling your reactions to whatever's happening around you is traffic. You're driving in traffic, everybody's heated, everybody's busy, everybody's trying to get somewhere. The faster than they're they're getting there at the moment and somebody cuts you off in traffic right well what good is it going to do to get upset at the person that's cutting you off honking at them flipping them the bird what good is that going to do is that is that really making you feel better they cut you off deal with it and move on don't get angry don't get road rage because all it's going to do is it's going to increase your stress level and their problem is now your problem. Take it easy, breathe, relax. Everybody's going to get there. Okay. Realize what you're doing in the situation and calm down. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the fact that she is venting. Okay. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of dynamics between men and women. Now, when she vents, you need to practice active listening, fellas. That is a difficult thing for, for me. It took me a long time to really understand what that really meant. What, is, what does active listening really mean? It just basically it means that you're engaged in the conversation where you're not distracted by something else, where you look off to the distance and you, like, you start laughing or smiling. Stay in the moment and actively have a conversation while she's venting. Tell me more, babe. Or something simple like that, a simple statement while she's venting, it'll tell her that she's it's okay to vent a little bit and you can take it, fellas. That's what that means. So tell me more, babe. And then the, the kicker is to mean it. If you know anything about Imago theory uh, and Imago treatment when it comes to uh, therapy, this is the first step. Basically, you're opening yourself up to, to whomever you're talking to uh, so that they feel safe and they can continue a conversation and they don't shut down. It's a great way to open someone up. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a therapist. That's not what I do, but I do know a little bit about Imago and that's the first step and it's excellent when it comes to active listening. Put yourself in her shoes. Again, you don't know exactly what she went through in that particular day. She probably did more than you think, especially when it comes to raising kids. Raising kids is by far the most difficult thing for a marriage uh, and relationship. If you've got kids, you know what I'm talking about. They can definitely stress you out. And there's a lot more to life when you've got to change diapers, you've got to make meals, you've got to keep people bathed keep people off of each other. <laughs> There's a lot of things that go on when it comes to parenting. It can be exhausting. I get it. I've been there. I've been in, in this situation before where I didn't think that I was being appreciated. Well, when it comes to ladies, and especially if they're staying at home, if they're stay-at-home moms, that's their life. That's all they done. That's all they did that day. So when you go to work, you can escape that. You can be around colleagues. You can be around other people. You can interact with other people while your wife stays at home and deals with diapers and, and vomit and all of those things. So it's different types of stress. 
but you both have a role to play in the household. That's what I'm getting at. Check out a YouTube video that I've seen years ago. It's called The Nothing Box. It's a comedian in a, co in a comedy bit, but it's an excellent way to illustrate the differences between men and women, how we think. We think differently. Take a look at it. Trust me, it's worth your time. He essentially is talking about how men have a tendency to co compartmentalize things into boxes. And our favorite box is the nothing box where we don't think about anything. Zero. We just zone out and we are vegging out. Uh, that's our favorite box to be in because that's the box that we recharge in. When it comes to ladies, ladies have a tendency to kind of be all over the place and think about three or four different things within five seconds. This, 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 and then they keep going. And that's mentally exhausting. And I call it the gerbil in the head. Uh, there's a gerbil on, on, a, on a wheel that continuously moves. And a lot of times, guys, that's why ladies need to vent. They just need to get all of that extra pent up energy out and they need somebody to do that. Ladies, men don't have this gerbil. We don't have the gerbil. We can zone out and chill out for, in some cases, hours at a time mainly because we just want to recharge. Now, I know what you're thinking. Guys, you're just thinking that uh, I'm giving the go-ahead for women just to emotionally vomit all over you and you don't have any defenses. That's not what I'm saying. If she needs to vent, let her vent. And But if the vent goes on too long, try to diffuse it by trying to make her laugh. That's the best way to diffuse something like this, uh, trying to, to get her to smile, get her to laugh, use a little bit of humor, and it short circuits the gerbil. All right, so she can kind of stop and kind of calm down and come back to planet Earth, all right? A lot of times in this moment for a tactic that I use is, is bear hugs. Uh, you know, if my wife is really upset about things like this, I'll just reach out, just grab her and give her a big hug. Uh, sometimes she's not ready for that. She needs to vent a little bit more. She'll kind of push back, give me a little stiff arm. It's all good. I can take it. And then I reach back in and I give her a big, big bear hug and we can relax and move on with our evening. Uh, that's pretty typical for us. But if she doesn't come down and the vent is going on too long, a simple, that's enough, babe. That's enough. That's it. You don't have to to be angry about it. You don't have to use a bad tone. Cool, calm, and collected. That's enough, babe. It's all good. I had, a, I had a rough day too. Marriage isn't a competition. You're on the same team. When you keep score of who did what for how long, it just leads to resentment. And in some cases, serious resentment will build up. Keeping score has the, the potential to end just about any relationship, no matter how good it is. And... I see that quite often in, in coaching and really in, in real life. Uh, the resentment will build up and eventually it, it blows up. But keeping score is a surefire way of building resentment towards each other. Resentment will lead to contempt. And contempt is one of the biggest reasons for divorce. Now, there is an exception to this kind of thing when it comes to a mismatched handling of household duties. If things aren't getting done around the household, if, if somebody's taking up the slack of someone else, that needs to be addressed. Things need to be done around the household. And honestly, if the guy takes care of the masculine roles and the woman takes care of the feminine roles, it works really well. Because at that point, if, you, if you're doing your job, you can help your spouse out. You can help your, your partner out. Uh, if you've got your stuff done, if they've got their stuff done, you can help out your team. That's when it's it's great. For instance, perfect example, get done mowing the lawn, you come in, you see some towels on the dining room that needs to be um, needs to be folded, fold the towels. It's not going to hurt you, it's not going to kill you. Don't complain, don't bitch about it. Just do it. Just just do the things that need to be done around the household, and she will do the same thing for you. All is well. You're on the same team. So an extreme example is when the, a husband sits around playing video games for three, four hours at a time, and the wife has to go out and mow the lawn and do the plumbing, do the household duties that are typically masculine. That's when things really will build up resentment and contempt will build up very quickly. Or flip it over. Okay, You as a husband go to work, your wife stays in bed for till noon, 
doesn't do anything, doesn't take care of the kids, and you're coming home to a, a household that's in shambles, kids aren't taken care of, they're not fed, the, the diapers aren't, aren't changed. Those are extreme examples, but they do happen. In those instances, uh, you have to say something and you have to remedy the problem in a direct way. Keeping score in a, in a moment like that is, is necessary. So in those cases, something needs to be said uh, before resentment and contempt will build up and often does in a situation like that. So there you have it. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Join the private Facebook group. There's people from all over the world in there. We welcome everybody. As long as we play nice, it's all good. So as always, until next time, be better than you were yesterday and be desirable.